Okay, today we're going to be making hash brown casserole. And the recipe calls for one pound of ground beef, which I used uh, ground chuck, um, a small onion, and I just used part of an onion because I'm going to use the other part for something else later in the week. One can of cream of chicken, which is easy to open because it's got the pull tab. And one can of Rotel. It also calls for one 16 ounce bag of tater tots and two cups of shredded cheese. It goes um, in the crock pot after it's all assembled and it says that it cooks on low for two to three hours. You're not supposed to add the cheese on top until 30 minutes before you're going to eat it. So it basically just has time to melt. I've never, I've made hash brown casserole in the past. I've never used Rotel in it. So this will be a new experience for me. And so I'll let you know how it turns out. Um, this little skillet right here, we got online from walmart.com. It is a seven inch, isn't it? A seven inch electric skillet. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what it was. And how many watts was it? 700. It was a 700 watt. We tried a big electric skillet, but it was just too much and it kept, um, it kept popping, the breaker. popping our inverter. So it was just too much. So, um, we decided to go with this little one. This only cost like, what, it was like 15 15 about $15. Um, online we ordered it and then we just went into the store and we picked it up so basically all you do is you fry your hamburger meat and onion together and then you drain it if you have you know a really fatty meat which mine's not because I got tr uh, ground chuck so I probably won't drain it and then um, you spray your crock pot with um, cookie spray so everything won't stick and it's a fairly simple recipe which is good when you're cooking in the truck um, you just brown your meat and then um, you add the rotel to your meat and pour it in the crock pot and then you mix in the cream of chicken put the tater tots on top of that cook it on low for about two two and a half hours then 30 minutes before you're going to eat it, you add the cheese on top, um, just basically long enough to let it melt, and then it's supposed to be done. So, well, I'm going to finish cooking it, and I will show you how I assemble it, and then when it's done, I'll show you the finished product, and then I'll tell you the most important part, which is how it tastes. Are there any seasonings that you add to it? No, I don't think it called for any seasoning. Um, I mean, I guess you could add salt and pepper to your liking, but um, this cream of chicken, you know, is pretty salty. And also, the Rotel, mm, it's got 220 milligrams of, uh, no, it's got 380 milligrams of sodium. So, and plus the tater tots are pretty salty because they're packaged. So... I don't think you might, you probably don't need any salt for sure. You might need a little bit of pepper. Just whatever your taste. The recipe, I don't think, called for it. Here's the assembled product. And I'm about to turn it on and put the lid on. So we're going to cook it for about two and a half hours. And then we're going to add the cheese. Cook it another 30 minutes. And then we're going to eat it. So I'll let you know. Okay, here is the finished product of the hash brown casserole. It smells absolutely amazing. So we're about to taste it. And then we will both let you know how we liked it. Okay, Jay. We just got finished eating the hash brown casserole in a crock pot. <laughs> I get rid of that. Okay, Jay, we just got finished eating the crock pot hash brown casserole. That we nicknamed Tater Losh. Tater Losh. Yeah. 
So, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best you ever had. Now, is this food in general or just yeah, food. tater casserole? Well, yeah, just food in general. Food in general, I'd say I would rate it about a 6.5 to a 7. Okay, and I felt the same way. And so, tell everyone why we felt that way. Stop. Um, it just needed something. There was just something there that needed to be there. We think you could use like some type of like garlic, garlic powder, or some type of like something to give it a little. Uh. Yeah, and it tasted I a little bland. You know, like I mean, it, it had its own individual flavors, mm -hmm. but it's just like it's just like you described it best. It's kind of like having goulash, which is basically meat, potato, uh, meat tomatoes and noodles right but instead of noodles we had uh tater tots right so i mean it just missed something it, it's something missing we yeah can, and we can't place it but i mean and it, I, otherwise it was good yeah and i think that it would have been better maybe if the recipe called for you to drain the rotel because yeah. it was just a little too wet yeah, like, it made the, well, and also, you know, like, I don't know if it's possible, because I don't, I don't cook with a crock pot a whole lot. I mean, you do all the crock pot cooking for us, so, right. I don't know if it's possible to have some type of, like, um, layer to where the, the condensation, like, can, instead of, like, falling back down onto the food, because that's what kind of happened was the condensation from up here was falling down onto the potatoes and it yeah, got real true. soggy. Right. And then the only time they kind of like crisped up a little bit was when we put the layer of cheese on top. Yeah. And also in the recipe, which I'll post the link below, um, the lady said that she had used potatoes from a five pound bag of tater tots but she said to only use 16 ounces so i think maybe if you would have used more tater tots maybe it wouldn't have been as soupy i guess well i mean it wasn't really soupy but it just looked real soupy yeah i think you, you i think you could probably get away with um not putting that spray all around like i would put like some type of like <clears throat> coating on the sides like when you melt the cheese yeah then that way it doesn't stick to the side but like other than that it was just like it seemed like it was almost too greasy yeah and it was... like it was just sliding off <laughs> around on the plate <laughs> just slide right off the plate yeah. yeah but other than that you know i mean it was it, it had the flavor of the rotel it had the yeah. flavor of the cheese and the tater tots and you could barely taste the cream of chicken, but you, you could tell it was there. Right. I mean, you know, I in think all, maybe. A, a six and a half, seven is a fairly decent, especially yeah. for, you know, three hours of cooking. And yeah. it, when, when you're in a truck driving, three hours is basically 180 miles. Right. You put it on, you drive 180 miles, you stop, you eat, and you continue on. But for us, we're stopped for the night. So right. it, it just so, helped us out. Yeah. So I like that it didn't have a lot of ingredients. Um, that makes it easy to cook in the truck. I Prep like time that. was actually relatively short too. Yeah, all I mean, you had to do was just brown the ground beef and the onions together, and then you just throw it in the crock pot, right. mix it up, throw the potatoes on, eat it. Two and a half hours later, put cheese on it, and mm -hmm. then thirty minutes later, you eat it. Yeah. So I think probably we'll be having this for breakfast and lunch tomorrow. So get yeah, ready. There, there's, <laughs> there's still over half of it. Well, we ate half of it between both of us. Yeah. And there's still half of it left. Yeah. And I had two helpings and she had two helpings. So. Right. So we'll be eating it again tomorrow. It wasn't like totally throw it out. But yeah, it, it wasn't the best we ever had either. No, I, I mean I've I've never had slow cooker hash brown anything, so I mean for my first hash brown dish, right. or tater tot hash brown, I mean they're all the same, just cut differently. Right. But for for my first potato pot style supper in the truck of all yeah. things, I mean it was 
a lot better than going into the truck stop and spending fifteen twenty dollars for both of us to eat when we only spent like maybe seven to do that meal for right. both of us and, and it we probably have leftovers. Yeah, and it probably would have cost us more than that to eat in the truck stop. Especially, you know, with drinks and, you know, like it depends, like if you go to a subway, you know, like, you know, most of the truck stops have a subway. Yeah. You know, for two people for a foot long and a drink and, you know, if you make it two meals, that's like uh, $9 a piece. So that's yeah. at least $18 and then tax added onto it. You're looking at like around $20 for two people. Yeah. For two and foot long subs and a, uh, two foot long subs, a drink and a bag of chips. So, I mean, it just, for $20, we bought, you know, the hamburger meat, the cassar or the tater tots, the onion, the rotel, the, um, the, the cheese the cream of chicken and then okay all of that together was probably maybe ten dollars yeah maybe well like, that was maybe ten and then you know we had our drinks so you're looking at if you break down the individual cost you know just it, it's like you say yeah, a couple so of dollars much, each. Yeah. so i think it was pretty good next time we probably jazz it up a little bit more but I mean, all in all i thought it, it was, was good. fairly good so so, our next recipe that we'll post will be... I got the title. I okay. got the title. Okay. It's the Dr. Barbecue Pulled Pork Pepper Sandwiches. Yes, and it's a recipe we got off Pinterest, and it's for um, Dr. Pepper Pulled no, 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 Pork no, no, no. You gotta Sandwiches. You got to say it the cool way that I said it. No. Dr. Barbecue Pulled Pork pork pepper sandwiches that's the cool way to say it okay well we'll let y'all know next time how that turns out okay bye bye you supposed to say you're no not on this one